In 2009, the Intelligent Communities Forum named two New Brunswick cities among the seven most intelligent in the world. At a recent Economic Club of Toronto luncheon, community leaders discussed why Fredericton and Moncton are world leaders. And let's start by saying, so what the heck is an intelligent community? Well, we're going to start with what it's not. It is not about being the biggest community or the richest community or even the community that looks best in a bathing suit. Tell me about the process for determining uh, intelligent cities. Well, it starts when cities nominate themselves. Uh, we do a lot of research throughout the year to find communities that we think are of interest. We invite them to nominate themselves. Typically, um, this year, we, I think this year we brought in about 380 nominations. Uh, we review those internally. From that, we produce uh, our list of what we call the Smart 21, the, the communities with the most compelling stories. At that point, then, we start getting very analytic. We ask all those communities for a great deal of data. We have an academic team that reviews it and scores it. The, the uh, seven highest scoring communities we announce as our top seven intelligent communities of the year. Once they're in there, we do it all over again. We send the same uh, data to a, an independent research house, uh, as well as an, have an international jury of volunteers who vote on it. We combine those scores, and at the end, one of them comes out on top. What was uh, so compelling about uh, Moncton's story and Fredericton's story, and I guess really New Brunswick's story in general? Intelligent communities are of many kinds, and both those communities fit into a, into a, a type in which they faced an economic crisis. Um, they faced a kind of crisis that's sweeping communities large and small around the world of, we had a great economy, but it dried up and blew away. Now what do we do? Uh, and so they very consciously remade themselves and in ways involving broadband and information technology, taking advantage of, of remote uh, technologies or remote applications like the call center, which is a, you know, we're all used to them now, but they were revolutionary at the time. And they've gone on continuing to build out that kind of competitive advantage, creating the, a workforce that can do the kind of work that, that broadband makes possible, and, and working issues of innovation constantly and relentlessly, really. So these are the ways in which communities are increasingly advancing and changing themselves for the future. Fredericton had been uh, an institutional community for a long, long time. It relied on uh, growth of its university, growth of its government, growth of the power corporation and, and the other head offices that come with being at the center of a regional economy. We were always a knowledge community. When Fredericton was founded in the late 1700s, it was founded to be the capital. It was founded to be the seat of the university for the province and, and the seat of the Anglican church. And in the late 1700s, those were the knowledge industries of the day. And, and we continued on relying on those institutions for uh, 200 years. Uh, but in the early 90s, as governments started to deal with their fiscal challenges, uh, we were looking at a period where institutions were going to constrain their growth. We were looking at a corporate sector who was able to make use of much better tools, technological tools, to constrain their growth and, and manage their costs. All of a sudden, we didn't see growth as a given anymore. We always grew without doing anything. And that kind of scared us. And so uh, we looked at that problem and we said, we need to do something about this to make sure that we're not one of those communities that's left behind as a result of technological change. Well, Moncton was a city, a blue collar, one industry town in the late 80s uh, that was facing uncertain future. Uh, and uh, over a 20 year period, transformed itself to one of the most diversified economies and fastest growing uh, communities in Canada. In the late 80s, uh, our, all our economy was, was, was based on the CN shops, the, the railway, Canadian railway uh, uh, company. And in the late 80s, they decided to close their facilities in Moncton, which resulted in, in four to 5,000 jobs that were lost over, overnight, which was devastating for the, for the community. And uh, so we had two options. We were against the wall, so two options. Either you bounce back and you re reinvent yourself, or you become a ghost town like many of the, the smaller centers in northern regions of Canada that, that, that suddenly lose their mind or their mill overnight. So, uh, so that's what we did. We rolled up our sleeves and we decided to reinvent ourselves and take advantage of, of local leadership, regional cooperation, the presence of our universities and colleges to say, yeah, we need to figure out a plan B. Um, there's a bit of luck and, and good timing involved, like this, this, the fact that we were forced to go back to the drawing board and reinvent ourselves 
took place at a time where telecommunications uh, and the service sector was was booming, uh, and we took so we took advantage of of that to position our, ourselves strategically, uh, taking advantage of some strategic investment infrastructure in 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 the city, and also the fact that we had a bilingual workforce, which is critical in the service sector environment that that we're in. So those are some of the in a summary what what we did to to reinvent ourselves and what happened to Moncton over the past 20 years. You have Wi-Fi on all your buses, and I can't even get a cell phone signal when I'm on the subway here. <laughs> I heard, I heard about that. I, 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 I feel your pain, and that's why you should move to Moncton. <laughs>